Welcome back for another Lima holster review. Today I am going to be going over the UBG regulator out of the waistband holster. I have two, one for my four and a quarter inch 1911 and one for the XDM and you'll see them both. So let's get started. The UBG regulator is made of cowhide with the option of getting exotic leathers either for aesthetics or maybe even some extra reinforcement around the mouth or around the body of the holster. They come in mahogany, brown, or black, the cowhide, and the exotics can include shark, iguana, python, ostrich, and even beaver tail. It has a very nice cant, and the cant is always going to be the same across the, across the design. There are two offset belt loops that really help distribute the weight of the firearm, especially when you get into your heavier guns like your 1911s or your full frame guns. The snaps are what are called one-way fasteners, which means that there's only one way that it will snap securely. There's a small, you can't see it that well, but there's a small hook here, which means you can only snap it one direction and it will not come the other come off or unsnap from the bottom so it must deliberately be unsnapped from the top which makes it very very secure to the belt because it is a semi custom holster you can have the belt loops made to any diameter of belt that you need these just happen to be one and a half inch belt loops. The belt attachments are non-pivoting belt attachments and as I said in my other video this could be good because then you don't have to worry about them pivoting to the point where they would actually fall off. It's an open top holster and also an open bottom holster and as I pointed out before the open bottom is nice to allow air and debris to just flow through the holster so you don't end up with anything building up in the bottom of the holster like moisture or any kind of sand or dirt. It does have a very nice sweat guard here and of course it can be made for either right or left handed. Another really nice thing about this holster is the curved body, which is made to really wrap right around the body so you don't have to worry about it becoming too tight. A lot of, a lot of holsters, if they're flat, they're completely flat, and then you put them on and they wrap around the body, they get really tight in this area and it becomes very difficult to draw the holster. But because this, or I'm sorry, draw the firearm from the holster, because the holster is already curved, you really don't have to worry about it pulling so much to the point where it pinches on your firearm and inhibits the draw of the firearm. Because this is an out of the waistband holster, reinforcement is not necessary, not really necessary, especially with such a rigid leather. However, you can get it as an option if you speak with Nate and tell them that you want it. This has reinforced shark for the Wilson. The this has reinforced shark along the mouth and on the on the front of the body and along the snaps here. The snap loops are made of shark. On the regulator for the XDM, it just has another panel of cowhide that my husband requested. Because this is a semi-custom holster, you can decide with Nate's guidance if you want any kind of reinforcement or any kind of exotic leather and where you want to put it. I've seen him where he's put it you know, completely across the mouth along with along the snaps. Also I've seen it where it comes all the way down the front. Um, you know you can just talk to Nate and decide where you want any kind of extra or exotic leathers. Um, again, here showing the other simple cowhide reinforcement of the mouth here. You can see how it keeps it just a little bit more rigid. Makes this open part, or this front part of the holster, very rigid and very stiff for a nice, solid holster. 
Now we're going to talk a little bit about build quality. These holsters are built very nice. Uh, I've had this holster for over two years and you can already see that it still looks brand new. I've been carrying it for over two years. No real scratches, no fades of the die, and there is no wear on the back, no rubbing off of the die. It looks like I said, it looks almost completely brand new. I'm not exactly sure how long my husband has had this one, but same thing. Just no rubbing off of the die, still nice and rigid. Now these are a little bit more rigid than your standard leather holsters that you would get from like Blackhawk or, or Galco. And this is, um, and that, I, I talked to Nate about this and asked him why that was, and he said that the alcohol-based die um, stiffens, is, stiffens the leather as well as the acrylic finish that he puts on it. And it's a good thing because it molds so completely and so rigidly to the firearm that it has excellent, excellent natural retention. And you can see just how molded it is by you can see the uh, the thumb safety here, you can see the uh, slide serrations, and even in this one you can see um, you know serrations and uh, on the back it's kind of easier to see. You can see where the the serrations were on the slide. You can see the uh, the trigger guard, all that kind of stuff. Just how just how tightly molded it is to the firearm by just being a little bit more rigid. But it's still flexible enough to where it's not so stiff that it would be uncomfortable. Some of the exotics do help with reinforcement or help in some way, but most of the time they're just for aesthetic purposes, just to make them look really good. Um, the screws on this are what are called Chicago screws, and you can see here that the back of this screw is actually in between the two folds of leather here on the holster, so you don't have to worry about the back of the screw either scratching your belt, it's completely hidden inside the two folds of leather, which makes it really nice. They're very nice and tight. Nice tight screws, very nice snaps. Like I said, the one-way fastener snaps, so there's no way that these snaps are coming undone unless you deliberately take them off. The stitching on these holsters is just superb. The stitching, the cutting, everything is perfect, nice in line beautifully, beautifully stitched. And you can see here, this this trim on this holster is shark. And you can see here how the shark is stitched onto the holster. On this one, the cowhide, you can see how beautifully even and tight the stitching is. The cutting is wonderful. There's no rigid edges. Very, very nice stitching. Very nice cutting of the leather. leather. To show where it's recommended to be carried, I actually made up um, another little body clock that you can actually see a little bit better. It's recommended for right-handed carry to be carried from about 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. So it's not, you know, not an appendix carry, um, not a small in the back holster. So for right hand, about 3 to 5 o'clock, and for left hand, about 7 to 9. Now it is time for the um, does it have, will it do section. Will it accommodate crimson trace grips? Yes, but you must request them. Uh, because this is a semi-custom holster, he can make it molded to the crimson trace grips, but if you don't ask for it, he will mold it to the, the regular firearm and the crimson trace grips won't work. So if you have crimson trace grips, you want them in this holster, you have to make sure that you tell him that and that you want them in there. Um, does it have a reinforced mouth? I kind of covered this that it can, but it doesn't necessarily need it. So this is an option, this is optional. When you talk to Nate, if you decide to order order one, uh, tell him that you want a reinforced mount mouth and you can discuss which leather might be better for reinforcement. Uh, like my husband's holster here, this is reinforced just with another strip of cowhide and with my holster, this is reinforced with a patch of shark. Does it have a retention device? No. There is no retention device on the regulator. There's no retention screw, no retention strap, no retention button. It's just an open top, uh, naturally formed holster. Does it have a body shield or sweat card? Yes, it does. 
Here is the body shield for the 1911, and here's the body shield for the XDM. Is it adjustable? No, it is not. It is one single cant. Also, as far as sizing is concerned, because it is warped, it's a little harder to uh, to get a good reading on. But for the 1911 here, the, now this is for a four and a quarter inch 1911, so it's about um, eight and a half inches, eight and a half inches long from belt loop to belt loop, and from the bottom of the holster to the top. A little over seven and a half inches tall, or um, I'm sorry, seven and a quarter inches tall from top to bottom. And like I said, because this is for a 1911, of course, this will vary on your type of firearm, but it is, as far as the body is concerned, a little over one and a half inch, or uh, just about, just under. Um, one and a half inches here. So you can see that it's just, just under, or just about one and a half inches. Now for the XDM holster here, from belt loop to belt loop, we're looking at the same, the same, and the same width, about seven and a half inches. And like I said, remember this is a curve, so if it were flat, which you don't want to try and flatten it, because if you tried to flatten it, you could ruin some of the rigidity and then ruin some of the, um, uh, the natural retention. So you don't want to try and flatten it, but in its warped state, seven and a half inches long. And for the XDM, it is just about seven inches tall. Of course, this is at its widest point, same thing, about an inch and a half, a little bit less than an inch and a half in diameter. Now we're going to go into the natural retention segment. Um, I've got my Wilson here, which is what that, uh, what it was made for. No ammunition, no magazine. To show you just how well this retains. You can shake it around, you can do anything you want to with it. It's not falling, off, falling out. Let's go ahead and uh, show the XDM here. Natural, natural retention. For the XDM also not coming out here. You can also see a little bit of the difference here. This one does not completely cover the trigger guard on the XDM, whereas this one does. And that is, again, because it's a semi-custom holster, you could talk to Nate and talk to him about completely covering the trigger guard or doing a completely flat top like this. Both holsters give access to the magazine release. A good holster, in my opinion, will give access to the magazine release. Okay, now we're going to go into the um, the drawing reholster, natural retention segment, and the concealment segment. And as always, demonstrating, there's nothing in the chamber, uh, no magazine, both a tactile and visual check. And we have two guns that we're going to be using today, so... notes for the other video. An open top holster is eventually going to give up its firearm. What are you doing? Check your hands. <gasps> Pervert. Okay. <clears throat> it's not so much about how it retains as far as not giving up the gun, but if it shifts around or moves around a lot. You want an open, hot, open top holster, or any holster for that matter, to stay where it is. So that's what we're looking for more than this, more than holding the firearm completely securely and not giving it up. That's pretty easy. Yeah, that's a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, Well, just like... Yeah, just like that. <laughs> well, that stays on pretty good like that. Alright, so 
So then, of course, for the second, we do the drawing segment. And again, I'm going to move my husband back this way so that um, this is my designated safe area. There's nothing that direction. And of course, we've already shown that the firearm is uh, <clears throat> unloaded. So. That actually comes out super, super smooth. That is a, that is a very nice, um, a very nice draw. And of course, reholstering is very easy. Very easy. Very nice. some weight so it's actually my belt is on the uh, tightest notch it can and it's still a little loose so but that's just it so um, now we're gonna do a little bit of uh, concealment showing concealed and because this is an out of the waistband holster obviously it's um, a little harder to conceal you're in the waistband holsters you only have to conceal pretty much the, uh, the grip frame but with an out of the waistband holster, you've got to conceal the whole length of the firearm. So, in that case, you need a little bit longer of a cover garment. Okay, so this is just with a long sweater. Nothing, uh, nothing too elaborate. Just a longer sweater, even a short length or short sleeve sweater. And it's very similar to the Vetter that you saw in some of my other holster videos. So, um, pretty, pretty easy to conceal. Nothing, um, Nothing sticking out. The holster is held very tightly to the body, um, considering the out of the waistband design. And uh, to show you how it will look on and conceal on a larger frame, my husband has his um, UVG regulator with his XDM. showed it's pretty concealable even for an out of the waistband holster it's not really offset of the body so it keeps it really nice and close to the body so there's not a lot the firearm really isn't um, you know printing too bad because it's held really nice and close to the body which is very nice for an out of the waistband holster so very concealable and extremely comfortable um, out of the waistband holsters are usually more comfortable than in the waistband holsters, so it's not a huge surprise that this is so comfortable. But one of the things that is so great as far as comfort is concerned on this is with your heavier firearms, the offset belt loops really do help keep it really nice and and weight distrib or, and the weight distribute weight distribution is fantastic making it not feel so heavy and so laden down on the one side. And so it makes it very, very comfortable. And the cant, that very, very nice, almost severe cant, really holds the firearm in such a place where the, the grip frame does not stick out so much as you would expect for an out of the waistband holster, or for any holster for that matter. So very concealable, very, very comfortable, so it gets a big thumbs up for both from me. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about what these holster, I'm sorry, what uh, UVG makes these holsters for. 
there is a long list of firearms that these holsters are made for and the entire list is on his website which I will list which is ubgholsters.com and but just to give you a brief kind of overview of what holsters these will fit all three to five inch 1911s with or without rail all major Glock models uh, your Springfield XDs your Smith & Wesson M&Ps uh, some other names that he has listed on his website as far as fit is Taurus, Walther, Ruger, Keltec, HK, Beretta, Colt, CZ just to name a few for the whole list go to his website because there's just way too many to list in in a uh, you know just in one quick little snippet um, he also has on his website that if the holster is not available for your particular gun uh, go ahead and email him and he will see about make, getting a a mold for that firearm that you have so if you don't have it go ahead and email him his email is listed on his website of course as I said, the website address is ubgholsters.com. And the holsters are made by Nate Gable himself, and he has been making holsters for four years and in business for three years. Uh, he's got a very easy to navigate website, everything is very um, laid out very easily. He also has a care and frequently asked questions page that are really great to read as far as caring for the holster. Um, talks about cleaning it, waxing it, that kind of stuff if you want to. Um, also something that's kind of unique in the holster making industry is that he has a 90 day money back guarantee um, if you, you know, if you like the holster, as long as, I mean there's a few exceptions to the rules, you know, if you, if you have mismeasured your belt and also, if you've abused your holster, he doesn't he doesn't um, cover those in the warranty. But if it's returned in a like new condition, um, he will give you a money back your money back um, if you don't like it for any reason. The only thing that you have to pay is shipping to get it back to him. Um, the cost for these holsters starts at about seventy five dollars. Um, of course, because of material and labor costs that varies so obviously if you want exotic exotic leathers and um, it's going to take more time to to do that um, your cost may vary but that's actually a pretty good price for a um, a good leather holster so a good starting price anyway um, also wait time varies of course depending on bat log and time of the year but um, I think that we got both of these within three weeks so that's not a bad wait time so if you are curious about his, his current wait time go ahead and contact him I'm sure he'd be happy to let you know what, um, what kind of wait time to expect also finally um, after talking with him a little bit about his holsters and his business he wanted me to let you know that if you watch this video and um, put up an order through him and put Lima Life in the comments of your order page that uh, he will waive shipping. So just something if any of you guys are interested and um, want to get a holster and you've seen this video go ahead and put Lima Life in the comments and you'll get free shipping. So there you have the UBG regulator out of the waistband holster. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think.